Hello, welcome to the final session of the Mixed Media and Collage course. Today we're going to be looking at using collage to create a textured landscape. So we're going to be looking at landscapes today and creating texture. I'm just going to show you a few that I've done previously. These are based on moorland scenes. Um, both, of, both of these have got watercolour skies um, and then I've actually applied texture using um, flour mixed with the paint and also some textured wallpapers here for the rocks. Um, this one is just using some tissue and some flour mixed with the paint. And then this one here I can just show you. This one is using, again, just the flour mixed with the paint and a bit of the scrunched up tissue paper in the foreground. All of these are obviously using just um, watercolours for the sky rather than any texture. Now I'm just going to show you what I'm going to try and create today. So I'm going to be basing my work today on um, some photographs taken on a lovely trip to Porth Joke that we did last week, which was just gorgeous, seeing the poppy fields. Um, so I'm just got these photos here with a sort of a suggestion of a hill in the distance, not, not the dominant feature. The dominant feature obviously is going to be the field in the front, in the foreground with the poppies. I've got a close up here of some of these lovely grasses as well. And this one's got some lovely grasses coming up. So I'm now going to create a sort of textured, a textured background to paint over the top of. So here's my textured collage that I've created um, previously and I've, I've let it dry just so that obviously it's ready for painting. Um, obviously just using a bit of old cardboard um, to, stick it, to stick it on with, which, you know, PVA glue. I've used scrunched tissue paper here for the sky area, so I'm trying to make it textured. I've used lots of different textured wallpapers on this one. Um, this was going to be a sort of slightly the, the hill in the distance and then this is the idea hopefully this is going to be the field in the foreground with the poppies and do some splattering and then some dry brushing and things over the top so you need to sort of decide what your theme is going to be create your collage let it dry and then we're ready for doing our painting Okay, so colours I'm going to be using for this particular landscape are for the sky, I'm going to be using a little bit of um, cyan blue with white, so it's quite pale. I'm going to be using um, various blues and yellows to create greens and gold, sort of golden field colours. So I'm going to be using the cyan blue, ultramarine blue, a little bit of white, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, and a little bit of yellow ochre. So I'm going to get those done before we start. I start thinking about putting poppies on afterwards. So. I'm going to start off by mixing up a sort of light blue for the sky. So I've mixed a little bit of cyan with some white and I'm just going to now apply this straight over because I've created quite a texture here for my sky. If you're using watercolours for your sky, so you want to wet that area first and just sort of apply washes over the top. I don't want it too dark and I don't want it all the same shade either so I'm going to lather that on. Later on the idea is because I've got a textured sky I'm hoping I can dry brush this with white to get the idea of a few little sort of clouds and in the sky. That's the plan. There, so just dog that on. sort of a general a general feel for the sky I might just just she darken up a couple of areas just a tiny bit sort of rub that in a little bit with my finger just so it's not all too similar looking because you get dark different colors in the sky don't you going on a bit more interesting right that'll do now, I'm going to dry that off and then come in and put, start putting the colours for my, for my landscape. Okay, so I'm now going to come in and start painting these distant hills and working downwards. So I'm going to start off not worrying too much about shades of greens and things at the moment. I'm going to use a little touch of cadmium yellow. What I'm going to do, I'm going to actually water this down a little bit. And I just want it to, I'm scr trying to scrumble it in. And I don't want it to be just one colour, so I'm scrumbling, scrumbling. Just 
be a little bit careful of that edge. There we are. I'm trying to just get that into all the little nooks and crannies there. And use a little bit of cadmium on this one. So I'm just varying the shade very slightly. I'll say it's a matter of scrumbling so you get rid of your white patches at this stage. I know it looks very bright, but this is going to be toned down. I'm going to make this, it's going to have shades of green on it, but I tend never to use ready mixed greens. I always tend to just let things, like to use yellows and blues and let various shades mix on the paper. You come in with a little touch of yellow ochre as well here, just to tone some of the areas down a little some water and I'm just going to come and let that blend on the paper and this is for this textured wallpaper what you can do I'll show you in a minute is if you want to you can want it's the paint still what you can sort of sponge it off a little bit if you want to I'll just get a bit of tissue and if I wanted to I could just sort of daub that a little bit And what I'm going to do, I'm going to work my way down here with shades of yellow and then come back. Okay, so I've put different shades of yellow on here. So that's this lemon, cadmium and a little bit of yellow ochre. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start trying to get some areas of green or colour here going on. So I'm very like, just going to put on, I've got a little bit of this cyan blue here. I'm just going to start working some of this colour in just a little bit. And I'm going to let the colours blend. So I'm obviously getting shades of green appearing. Okay, that's the idea. As you can tell, I'm sort of rolling the brush around really rather than... So it's a bit random. So I'm then going to soften that in a little bit. Just using my... just like rubbing my finger actually. I'm just softening these areas in. So I'm just getting different shades. Okay, that's sort of giving it a bit of a, a better feel. And I'm going to dry that off now and then come in and I think I'm going to go in. I want to add hunch. Before I dry it off, I'm going to go in with a little bit of the ultramarine blue. Just so I've got a couple of touches of slightly darker greens in there as well, because there are some darker greens in the in here as well, rather than it just all being pale. And again, each time I do that, I'm just going to soften that in with my finger a little bit so it merges and blends on the paper. Just do that on here as well. I'm just going to some darker areas going on tops of those hills and I'm rubbing it in my as you can see my finger I find that easiest I just like doing that that way that's it that's better that's just giving it a bit more a bit more depth hasn't it and I'll just put a little bit on here as well Overdo it, but just a little bit there. Better. Right, that I do, and I'm gonna now. I am gonna dry it off, and I'm gonna put some Analinky on it, like I did with the seascape. Okay, so now this is dry. I'm going to wet these hill areas with clean water just like i did previously in the in the last last um session that we did and i'm going to actually apply some slightly darker colors to um get a bit more interest going on i've got some darker greens here i'm just gonna what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna let that flow and run a little bit 
just want the top of that heel to stand out a little bit. I'm going to come in with some, just a couple, little bit of darker blue as well and just see if I can let that run, run down a little bit just to get a bit more, a bit more definition to that edge really. And sort of push it back so it looks a little bit further away. I might just not to lose all the light. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to dab, lightly dab a couple of sessions. That's it. Line that up again because I don't want to lose all the light areas. That's better. That's, so you can hopefully you can see that sort of pushed it back a little bit. That bit there. And I'm going to do something similar to this at the top of this one here. So get some darker green just come in just a little bit and let that I'm gonna let that run down this way and I want to run this direction that's it I'm quite happy that the runner run along there there we are just Sort of pushed it back a little bit as you can see wonderful the other thing i'm just looking at my photograph and just show you there's a little bit of a obviously a little bit of a hedgerow hedgerow just here so i might do that i'm going to do a little suggestion of that just putting some another color here i might try i've got a little bit of turquoise here oops that's very strong isn't it incredibly strong get some water dilute that a bit what I'm going to do, I'm going to let that trickle this way. Can. And hopefully that's going to give me the impression of something else being, oh sorry, something else going to be there. I'll just go in with a little bit more colour there. And let it run that direction. Sorry, I keep doing it so you can't see, sorry. Just, I'm just trying to let it trickle and run. Got a little bit of a, a little, nice little crevice there in between some of the stuck stuck pieces of paper. So I'm trying to make it encourage it to run in that, that direction. Better, it sort of gives you the impression of something being there, which is quite nice. I'm just going to keep going with a bit of dark green. And again, let it run, run one way, then the other. Fine, that just gives it an impression of something there. So I'm going to get this bit dried off before I do the next area. Now, dried the background. The reason being is because I want to tilt the paper. And if this is still wet, the paint might run in the direction I don't want it to run. So dried that off. Now I can move the paper in any direction, not worry too much. I'm wetting this foreground, midground and foreground areas. And I'm now going to add some different shades of greens into the fields here. I don't want them to be all green. I want the photo they're quite green, but I quite like to have the idea of some golden um, fields of corn and wheat or barley, whatever it was growing. I don't, I'm not very good. I don't know quite know what it was growing there, but it looked beautiful. Um, and again, in a moment, I'm going to let this run a bit. Okay, so. I'm going to go in with a few little, I'll let the back run first actually, I was going to go in with some dark, but if I let the light light colour run first, then I can add some darks where I want it to be. So I'm going to come in and just let some of this run down and flow about a bit. Some green, so I'm going to go in with a little bit of darker. So on the photograph, I'll just show you again. See, there's a few, you know, darker patches at the base of plants and where there's gaps and things. So I'm just going to have a suggestion of a few little darker areas. I don't want too much because it's got to be nice and bright, really. So I'm going to go in and just put a few darker areas in a few places. 
which I can then again hopefully let those run around a bit. Just dogging lots of water on really to let it run run about. We'll just wipe off the areas I don't want it to be. Here is a bit of patch, isn't there? I need that to run a bit more. Go that way. I'm trying to let it go this way. Come on. A bit more on. Don't do what I want it to. Go that way. That's better. <laughs> I'll go that way. Sorry, I keep keep doing that, don't I? I'm not. I'm looking at the painting rather than the screen, so I can't see when I'm going off screen. Sorry. Right. Now that that brown um, green is rather bright, so what I might do, I'm going to just add a tiny, tiny touch of um, darker blue in there, just to tone some of it down, a tiny bit. Hopefully. Hopefully I haven't gone too dark. Nice thing about this Anna Link is though I can always I can always get rid of it if I really don't like it. I can wet it and wipe it off. Stop you being so worried about doing things, I think. Go back this way. Come on. So, right, so you can see I've got some nice lights and darks in there now. So I might even be too much, so I'm just going to mop up a little bit of it. That's quite nice. Yep, yeah, that's quite nice. I'm quite happy with that, actually. Um, I'll just make this area here a little bit brighter. A bit brighter green just there. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. I'm going to dry that off and then I'm going to start thinking about adding some lovely poppies. Okay, we'll dry now. So before I start actually putting the poppies in, I'm going to do a little tiny bit of dry brushing on the surface and then do the poppies last because obviously I can't dry brush this afterwards. So what I'm going to do with the, the hills in the distance, I don't want them to lighten up too much, but I just want to show up that texture a little bit more. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just add a tiny, tiny bit of dry brushing using some lemons at the yellows at the bottom. Just, just dry brushing a little bit over these, this texture to bring it out a little bit. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit of yellow ochre on the top, I think. Just a tiny, tiny touch, just a tad. That's it. So I don't want to lighten them up too much. I think that's enough, actually. I'm not going to do too much to that. Now, I might do a little bit of dry brushing on the the grassy areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some lemon yellow just very lightly on some areas. Dry brush a little bit. I don't want too much. I'm only going to do here and there, just a little bit. Then I'm going to go and dry this off and put some poppies on, which is the bit I'm really looking forward to doing. <laughs> so do a touch of this. I'll just dry it off and then I'm going to get those lovely on. Okay, all dry. So what I'm going to do now, I've got some cadmium red and I've just mixed a tiny touch of cadmium yellow with it to make it a little bit more orangey because poppies are incredibly bright. Now, if you look at the photograph, you'll see obviously in the distance, you just almost get like a haze of tiny little red dots in a field of poppies and then you obviously get bigger splodges of red as you get closer to the foreground. So my idea is I'm hoping I can dry brush the textured wallpaper for the little dots and then do maybe some more bigger splatters and things in the foreground. So that's the plan. Just hope it works. Huh. So 
I'm taking the excess paint off my brush and I'm going to very, very lightly dry brush now. Not too much paint on. Just very slightly start dry brushing. And hopefully that's going to glance and just give little specks of colour. Great, that's working. I'll just finish this bit off, carry on doing the dry brushing, and then I'll come back and show you. Okay, so I've done dry brushing of red over the whole surface there, apart from this little bit here. That's, this wallpaper's got lines on, so I'm hoping it looks a bit more grassy. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover up the areas I don't want splatters on. Only there. And I'm going to try and do some slightly bigger splatters over this area here in the foreground. So I've mixed up. Got a little bit of water in with the bit paint to make it a bit more runny. Put my foot on my palette knife. See if we can do some splatters. Bigger ones. Oops. Come on. I might just kick a little bit of water on this just to see if I can get those to spread around just a tiny bit more. I'm going to get some water oops, and just flick a bit of water on that paint. It doesn't behave, I don't know, it's not the same as watercolours, but you can get it to move around a little bit. bigger splatters there. Now oops I just need to that's a bit better. And those are a bit in a sticking out like they are in line with a bit of a line so I'll just take some of those off so they're not too quite so neat and tidy looking. That's better. That's better. Okay I do need a few more just down here but I'm run out of paint. I'm just going to mix up a little bit bit more paint and do that. Okay, so I've finished this off, done a few splatters, all done and dried. The only thing else I've done just here is I've actually very lightly dry brushed the sky with white because I had a bit of texture in the sky and I've just, just lightly dry brushed some of that texture with a bit of white just to give the illusion of a few little fluffy clouds in the sky. Um, I could just leave it as that, but I'd quite like to um, do a few little grassy stems. I've got in the photograph, there's... You can obviously see in the foreground lots of little grassy stems. So I'm just going to try with a fine brush to see if I can mix. Sorry, if I can actually apply a few little grassy stems. I've just mixed up some ultramarine blue and a little cadmium yellow to make a sort of darkish green. And I'm just going to come in and do, I don't know if it's going to show on this texture, that's the thing. I don't think it will. No, it's not going to work. I had hoped to try and do a few grassy stems, but because it's so textured, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. No, I think I'm going to have to just leave that. Never mind. It's worth a go. <laughs> so I'm just going to wipe those little bits off, those little marks. There, that's fine. Just so such a textured surface, I just couldn't work over the top. Right then, I've finished. So that's my finished picture. 
Um, hopefully you can see that the texture shows up really quite nicely. Um, and just by dry brushing lightly across the textured wallpaper, that's obviously given the impression of lots of little speckles of colour in there and some nice and some nice splatters here. So I hope you have a go um, at doing some landscape pictures using texture. I mean, obviously, it's entirely up to your own imagination what you want to achieve. Um, there's going to be a slideshow following this of some students' work doing different sorts of landscapes that have taken part in some of my classes. Um, and if you do Facebook, please, would you put your images onto Facebook? That would be wonderful. We'd really like to see them. And also, most importantly of all, this is the last session in this course. So please, if you have taken part, would you please, please fill out a feedback form, which will be coming up um, and send it back, please, um, so that we can sort of have that as proof that who have taken part for our funders. Thank you so much and have a go.